again and today I'm going to talk about handwriting, Old English style handwriting. I hope you like the fish by the way on the introduction. That was at Monterey Aquarium a few years back. Yeah, I just, another way of doing it really. Um, yeah, the Old English um, handwriting, well script really. Um, we looked at American cursive recently and uh, I promised we'd look at this Old English style. Now then, a little bit of history. You ready? You listening? You listening at the back? All right, thank you. Um, the Romans gave us our alphabet, the ABC that we know, but they only used uh, capital letters. So over the centuries, when the scribes, the monks mostly, were writing the letters out, they would eventually change them so the letter A turned into the small letter. And they would use probably a pen like this, which is, is a quill. This is a goose feather. And it is this big, it's amazing. But it's this part of the, the feather, which is a tube. It's incredible, really, that it's so strong and, and light. It's fantastic. And then it, the end would be cut to form a pen nib. And then you'd have to write with it. And then once you've done that, you would have to cut it again. Anyway, so I'm going to use this, a parallel pen. It's a six millimeter one. And it is lovely. These are great to use. They've got a cartridge in them, so you don't need to dip them. Just to prove it to you if you want. There you go. And this is a, a good six millimetres across and very narrow the other way. So it produces an excellent line, thin and thick, when you hold it, as you do. And uh, so even on the continent in Europe, they were developing this sort of style particularly when uh, printing came into uh, use and it was invented, uh, they would um, use this style of lettering for the handwriting and then the printing. Later on, of course, when we got into the what, 18th, 19th century, a different form of handwriting would emerge as the clerks um, in all the various businesses would then use a copper plate style. And some of that was absolutely fantastic as well. So there's quite a history to the way all these um, handwriting styles developed. But let's have a look at the Old English one. Um, okay, let's crack on with it. Well, as I've said, I'm using a Pentel parallel pen. They're beautiful to use. Six millimeter thick, this one. Now, the Roman lettering was like this in capitals. And the more it was written, the more it changed to becoming this small letter A, which is quicker to write. I'll just go through to the letter H for now. There's the capital letter B, which again would sort of change into this and eventually a small letter B. C, of course, would just be written smaller. That's easy enough to do. D would change. Here's the capital that the Romans would have used. And then to try and write that in one movement or two, it would turn into this sort of small letter D. Now E, that's one, two, three, four movements there. So that makes it down to two. And that's two as well. Or that one is just one movement of the pen. F is rather similar. Just curve the back. until we get our familiar small letter F. Now G, again, will change from this Roman form till eventually we get this small letter G. H again changes quite a lot from the capital. Three strokes there, down to just two strokes there. Let's get into the Old English style then. I've drawn two guidelines in pencil and they are five widths apart. So that makes five of those six millimeter widths makes it 30 millimeters from top to bottom. Now this basic shape here is what most of the Old English letters are based upon. 
So there's an I, and there you can see how it would appear in the letter C and the D and the letter E. Bit of a mistake there. I suppose I should have taken the F down to the bottom first. But I'm not going to start again. G would be formed like that. H. And that downstroke you can take and make it quite decorative. The way I did what that thin line was to turn the pen right onto its corner. So I, J. There's always that little kick at the bottom as it sits down. It's got a little foot on each of the letters there. I'll draw some more guidelines here. Make them three centimetres, 30 millimetres from top to bottom. And that will fit in the small letters, the lowercase. Now the letter M is simply three of these units that are used for the letter I. And likewise, N would be the same, but just two of them. This gives a very much a, of a repeated pattern. You can fit it round O. P looks nice. And Q you can play about with this bit. Wham! Lovely. Now letter S has got to start like that. You're trying to push up there, which is tricky. And then with the edge of the pen, put a thin line across. I'll just dispense with the guidelines for now to finish this off. There's a V. W. It's a bit like a an M upside down. X. That will do us. Y is a little bit like the G. And then Z. Z in my country, my friend. Not used that often anyway. And now the capital letters in this old English style. This is a print from off the internet, off the computer. And I use that as a reference for all the capital letters because they can be quite complicated. And this looks like a very nicely designed set. So I'll just do one or two of the letters here. And there's no real need for me to talk it through. You just hold the pen at the right angle and copy them. And if there's a line to be drawn, a thin line, use the corner of the pen. This old English style is uh, all well and good for one word or a little phrase maybe, but um, you're not likely to use it for a shopping list, surely.
Well, there you have it, old English lettering. Have a go. Um, I sort of jumped over the intermediate unsold style, um, which I ought to cover. Maybe uh, I'll do it next time. If you ask me nicely, I'll give it a try. Okay, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you.